for you uh, students that are home today while the in-class students are taking the test, you're going to do a little uh, trigonometry review and it part of that review is a look at forces and force diagrams. So we're still talking about Newton's laws and we're specifically the second law and how forces cause acceleration. Um, but we're going to have to start to add forces together and that would be like adding the sides of a triangle or using the sides of a triangle to find the angle or the angle to find the sides. So that's uh, trigonometry. So let's get started here. I'll do a couple problems from your review and then the rest will be for you. And all you really need to know uh, to be able to do this is SOHCAHTOA. And remember, uh, SO is sine of the angle, theta, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse sides. Cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And if you look at our, our problem here, we have theta, it's 35 degrees, and we have the side adjacent to theta as 12 meters. You know it's adjacent because the, the other side next to it is the long side, and that's the hypotenuse. And what we're looking for is the side opposite the angle. So this, we, we have theta, we have adjacent, and we're looking for opposite. Of the three here, the one that has adjacent, opposite, and the angle is uh, tangent. So we're going to take tan, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. We're going to rearrange by multiplying the adjacent out of both sides. And we're going to plug in our values. Adjacent is 12 meters. Theta is 35 degrees, and remember, your calculator needs to be in degrees, not radians. So uh, check your calculator. It maybe it, it might say on the screen rad or or deg. You make sure it says degrees, and if it doesn't, go into the mode and go down and find and toggle over to degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, and then so then you will hit. Uh, you'll find the tangent of 35 degrees. Multiply that by 12 meters and you'll get that the opposite side is 8.4 meters long. And this should kind of make sense. It's, it should be less than the adjacent side. All right. And then we'll go on and do another example. Still Sokotoa. In this case, we have the angle theta of 33 degrees, and we have the hypotenuse 60 newtons. But we're being asked to find both the adjacent and the opposite sides. That's okay. Just do them one at a time. I'll start with looking for the opposite side. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. I'll rearrange by multiplying hypotenuse out of both sides. And then filling in the values. The hypotenuse is 60 newtons times the sine of 33 degrees. And we get that the opposite side is 32.7 Newtons. And again, it should make sense. It's significantly less than the hypotenuse. And then we'll move on to the other, the adjacent side, and we'll do cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply hypotenuse on both sides. Plug in the values, and we get 50.3 newtons. And again, this should make sense. The, the adjacent side is somewhat less than the hypotenuse and the opposite is even less, less than the adjacent. So our values make sense. And I'll leave the rest of the problems on that front page to you. But it really is just SOHCAHTOA. So give those a shot. And then we'll go on to force diagrams. So now you have the rest of the packet is a reading. And there are some problems in there. But it's explaining how we do force diagrams. And we do force diagrams because it allows us to add up a bunch of different forces that are acting on, acting on an object to find the net force acting on an object. And that is the force that causes acceleration. Okay, and here, an example, it says uh, we have a motionless cat on a rug. All right. And we're going to start by talking about the possible forces that, that we can draw. We have, certainly have the force of gravity, and that's, um, that's virtually every time you're going to be drawing a force of gravity. And that may be the only, the only force you have, but uh, 
that will always be there. And then the normal force, and that is a force that opposes gravity. And I'll, I'll explain that when we do the, the actual diagram. A force of tension is a force uh, where something is chained or roped or a wire tied to it and pulling it or holding it up, like a chandelier being held up by a chain. That's a tensional force. The force of friction, that's uh, where two objects are rubbing against each other and opposing each other's motion, so they act in opposite directions. And then a push or a pull, and that's just any, any general, like a car's engine pushing a car forward or a train's engine pulling the, the rest of the train forward or you pushing or pulling anything. Okay, so let's, let's start off here. We're going to start by drawing the Cartesian axis right there where the cat's sitting on the rug, so just the x, y axes. And x is along the surface. It's always going to go along, even if the surface is tilted, x will go along with the surface. And then y is the vertical, the up-down axis. Okay. And our first one we're going to draw is gravity, because it's always going to be there. The cat it has mass, the earth is going to pull the cat straight down. And gravity will always be drawn, drawn straight down. And as we've drawn it here, the cat should be accelerating through the floor because there is a force acting on the cat. The cat should be moving. It should be accelerating. We know this from Newton's second law that the acceleration is directly proportional to the mass and indirectly, or directly proportional to the force and indirectly proportional to the mass. There is a force of gravity, so there should be an acceleration. But we are told that the cat is motionless. So there must be other forces at work here opposing the force of gravity. And what we call that is the normal force. So anytime something is sitting on a surface, there is going to be a normal force. And not only is there a normal force, but because we know that the cat is motionless, we know that that normal force must be opposite and equal to gravity. So you can give like the normal force a positive value and the gravity a negative value and they cancel each other out to zero. We know this has to be true because the net force has to be zero because the cat is not accelerating. And we really don't have to put any other forces. There's no chains or ropes for tension. There's no friction because the cat isn't sliding side to side. There's nothing pushing or pulling the cat that we know of. So all we need to draw is gravity and normal, and they are equal because the cat is not accelerating. So we move on to the next one, and this is a skater moving at a constant speed across frictionless ice. So right now we know that we have no frictional force. That doesn't exist for us in this drawing. Uh, but we're going to, and we, we also know that it's not accelerating, it's at a constant speed, so we know the net forces are going to be zero. But we'll go ahead and draw our Cartesian axis, and we're always going to have gravity, and it's always going to be pulling straight down. The skater is on a surface, so that surface will be have a normal force opposing the force of gravity. And the skater is not accelerating down into the floor or up into the air. So we know that normal and gravity must be opposite and equal, giving us no net up and down force. It, so that's because it's moving at a constant speed. And since we have frictionless ice, we don't have to include friction. There's no ropes for tension. There's nothing pushing or pulling. It's just gliding along at a constant speed. So we know that the acceleration is zero. So the net force is zero. We'll move on to one last example before you start to work on the package yourself. You can draw a force diagram for a softball player who is slowing as she slides into base. So there is a change in velocity here. Whatever velocity this softball player had sliding to the right there, it's slowing down. So there must be a force slowing down the, the baseball player, softball player. So we're going to go ahead and put the Cartesian axis on there. And as always, we're going to have gravity. It's going to be straight down. And 
we know that the player is not accelerating up or down, so there must be that normal force equal but opposite to gravity because the softball player is not accelerating up or down. But we are, we are told the, the softball player is slowing, and since uh, the softball player appears to be sliding to the right, there must be something pulling her to the left, causing her to slow down. If there was no friction, she would continue at a constant velocity to the right, but there must be some force acting because we know she has a non-zero acceleration. She is slowing down. And we're just, this is two objects uh, sliding past one another, so we call that a frictional force, F sub F. And our drawing right now shows exactly what the description is, that the softball player is slowing as she slides to the right because there's a frictional force slowing her down, pulling on her to the left. And we can go back and look at our velocity versus time graphs and see that for the softball player over time, she starts with some, we're gonna, if we're going to say uh, to the right is positive, she has some positive velocity, and she's slowing and slowing and slowing until she's eventually going to stop because this frictional force is causing her to accelerate or slow down.